contempt of court. Contempt of court actually applies to anybody. It can apply to the attorney. Uh, contempt of court is basically the, the hammer, the right hand that the judge has in any courtroom. So for instance, um, if someone were to walk into court and just absolutely start swearing at the judge, threatening the judge, just act, acting absolutely disrespectful, they can be held in contempt of court. Um, also an attorney, if an attorney keeps showing up late or um, kind of says something to the judge that's extremely disrespectful, contempt of court. However, you see it mostly in court orders that are not followed. For example, uh, restraining orders, right? A lot of times in restraining orders, there's a condition that the person restrained is not allowed to own firearms for the period of the restraining order's effect, and they have to surrender them. Well, someone may forget to do that or just decide not to do that. So they're in violation of the terms of the restraining order, hence they're in contempt of court for disobeying the court order. The punishments vary. Um, usually the judge's biggest um, leverage is obviously putting you in custody. So really the punishment for disobeying a court order or being held in contempt is custody time. Now here's where it gets interesting. Let's say for some kind of misdemeanor, you get 90 days county jail. So you surrender to the sheriff's department and the sheriff's department's gonna keep you in however long they want, but usually people only serve a fraction of their time. Currently it's 10% in Los Angeles County. Other counties may vary, but you rarely do the entire time. With a contempt of court though, the judge puts you in and then he or she sets the day that they want you to come back. So the sheriff's department doesn't release you when you're in on a uh, contempt of court. You're gonna stay in there until the judge uh, assigns you back before him or her. So it's more of a disciplinary tool for the court to make sure that their rulings are respected and upheld. The defenses for uh, contempt of court. If you're an attorney, and I speak from personal experience, if you're ever found in contempt of court, you can, uh, rec you can demand a hearing where you basically, it's a little bit more formal, and a lot of times the judge will calm down or come down from whatever originally got them upset, and there won't be any uh, discipline. But the, the defense is usually, because you usually see it in the restraining order or protective order or something that the court has issued that someone has not followed, and now they're back in front of the judge. The first defense is usually lack of awareness, where you're going to claim that you weren't aware that the judge had ordered you to do something. The second one is lack of intent, meaning you didn't mean to disobey the court order. So for example, if you're ordered to stay 100 yards away from your ex-wife, and you're somewhere that she just happens to be, and she calls the police because you're within the 100 yards, but maybe you're at a grocery store or something. If you didn't mean, you know, if you're not doing it on purpose, you're not gonna get in trouble. But the, the most fascinating one, and the, the one you kinda want, is sometimes you can say, actually, judge, you were wrong in what you ordered. And I went out and I did it anyway. And now, because I'm in trouble for doing what you told me not to, now we really get into whether you were right or wrong. So the example is injunctions, right? So let's say a group of people want to protest the use of drums, okay? And they're gonna organize a rally in front of some type of military base, all right? And the powers that be go to court and they say that this can't happen, it's a breach of national security, um, it's safety concerns, this area is off limits. And a judge, a judge signs the injunction saying you can't do it. So we go and we do it anyway. And the police come and they notify everyone, you're not allowed to do this. So if they arrest you, you're gonna appear before that judge who issued the injunction. And you can say to the judge, judge, sorry, with all due respect, the First Amendment affords us the right to do what we just did. So if it turns out to be correct, and in that case it may, 
then you will not be found in contempt of court because the judge's initial order um, was not lawful. Contempt of court is the safeguard to ensure that certain conduct inside the courtroom remains professional and calm, and it's just like it sounds. You've done something where the court, i.e. the judge, is now looking at you through the lens of contempt.